All right, all right, guys. Hi, everyone. You are watching and listening to Croc and Moms TV podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Bree. And today on Croc and Moms, I'll be cooking live on television. And I'll also be interviewing a special guest for some extra flavor. So today, guys, I am making a crock and roast, which is pretty traditional when you think about the crock pot or the slow cooker, you're thinking, okay, that's a lot of people I'll get comments on and they say, that's the only thing, Lisa, I know how to make. So I don't really use my slow cooker a lot. And I'm like, what, what? Have you checked out the crockandmoms.com? Have you checked out Crock-Pot Moms on Facebook? Well, guys, you totally have to. Actually, you're probably watching from Crock-Pot Moms right now. We have a million followers of moms around the globe that are sharing their recipes, sharing our recipes, and putting their extra flavor or spin on it as well. And I know everyone is having issues right now with, you know, gas has been going up, food has been going up. So what better way to save money than uh, only use a few ingredients and make something flavorful in your slow cooker. So what I love is when people say I only can do a roast, I realize I don't really have a lot of crocking roast recipe videos out there. So today I'm going to go with a traditional crocking roast. So if you're a newbie and just starting, I'm going to teach you how to do that. But if you are like a pro and you've been making roast for years, that's the only thing you've been using your slow cooker. Well, you got to be exposed to our recipes because we have thousands and thousands of recipes on there that you could do cakes in the crock pot, pizza in a crock pot. I even made homemade burgers with Tamika Chapman, the CEO of Mogul TV Global Network, um, in my slow cooker. They were so good. Yes, I turned my slow cooker into a grill. So especially if you're camping or our guest who's on tour right now, she can do that as well instead of busting out her oven using her slow cooker. So today we're going to do a traditional recipe, but also I'm going to put a little spin on it and I'm going to tell you a second recipe that you can use with banana peppers if you want it a little bit more spicier. So it's a little different than the traditional crocking roast recipe, but let's get started to the original recipe that I'm making today. So I went to Aldi's too. No uh, shout out to them. They're not like an ad or anything or a sponsor, but I went, I noticed they have really low cost meats. And if you go any to any grocery store right now and you get a uh, meat, you don't have to get the best, the most expensive meat. When you're using the slow cooker, um, it will just slow cook and make it like these beautiful tastes, these amazing tastes. So you can get a cheap meat and it will taste good because your slow cooker, it did it for you. <laughs> so I use a two and a half pound crocking roast for my family of five, um, but we always have leftovers. So, um, you know, I recommend using that in your slow cooker for a family of five. Um, so what I did was I got a two and a half pound roast, chuck roast. You can use Angus, you can use, there's so many different types of roasts out there. Um, but I use the chuck roast and then you're going to get a whole, I have here 32 ounces of uh, chicken, beef chicken stock. But you can use uh, a bouillon cube. Um, most people use a half a cup of water. And, but I find when recipes say use like a half a cup of water if you're cooking with chicken, you would want to use chicken stock. It just brings out the flavor more instead of the water. So when I'm using beef recipes that call for water, I like to use beef stock. But if you don't have beets, beef stock in your pantry, or right now it just didn't fit in your budget, you can use a half a cup of water. So we're going to use two and a half pounds of meat, um, a half a cup of water, or you can use 32 ounces of this cooking beef stock. Then you're going to get a packet of your French onion mix. Now, if you don't have those dry um, onion recipe soup mixes, um, you don't have to um, just get that. You can use onion seasoning that you have in your pantry already with a little bit of salt and garlic and pepper and you'll be okay as long as you're using a beef bouillon cube as well for your flavor or your beef stock. So my traditional recipe though just has veggies where I have my carrots and I also peeled my potatoes over here and I'm still cutting them up. I was cutting them up 
quickly before this television show started because we are cooking in my house. I have a one-year-old, so he had to go down for a nap. I have a 14-year-old that was helping. Thank God he's so sweet and just was like helping wiping up his little peanut butter sandwich and putting him to bed with me. And then he also grabbed my five-year-old and said, come on, Kyle, let's go up and we'll do something fun. So I have four boys, well, three technically, and one on the way next month. And they're just all working together and helping me cook this amazing meal from my house. So I'm, you know, juggling it all. And I was dicing up these tomato, these potatoes quickly, like 50 seconds before we aired. <laughs> so I'm still over there cutting, but I used about five uh, cooking potatoes for my recipe. And uh, I'm going to use some one fourth tablespoon of a uh, teaspoon of salt and pepper. I usually just sprinkle it right on. And we're going to do that soon. But first, I got to tell you guys something. I have an awesome guest today that I just always love bringing on to my show for some extra flavor and also just good content. I mean, I want to first of all just thank my guest. She is so amazing. We have Raquel Jones. And I want to just tell you exactly what she does and how she's a, such a gift to this world. And then we're going to bring her on. I'm going to cook with her. And then I have some interview questions for her that is coming up. So Raquel Jones, she uh, launched the weather. She's right now on the wet, the wealth. It's called the wealth fair tour. And she also came up with can I live Inc organization. Uh, it's a 501 or 503. I know she's going to come on here, a nonprofit. And um, it's a guide for single moms and families um, that just break the cycle of poverty. So she's really helping um, you be dependent on your own. And she teaches low income families how to protect and grow their income and receiving also how to help them with social security benefits, housing, SNAP, Medicaid. And she's just uh, she's really helped the world. Um, even just kind of putting grants out there. Uh, she's created a place and a space for moms all around the world that need support. And she's supporting low income families and giving them amazing information to help them, especially right now, what we're all experiencing. So it is an honor to talk about her and bring her on today and interview her today. So let's welcome to the Crack and Moms podcast, Raquel Jones, to our to our cooking adventure today and interview. Welcome. Hi, Lisa. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, it is such an honor. And are you, I just have to say, like, when you zoomed in, are you on your tour bus right now? <laughs> we are on the tour bus. Yep. That is so we cool. surely are. We're in wow. New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And uh, are you eating well there? <laughs> we are not eating well. Um, but today was like my first day. It was like, okay, enough. Enough already. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the ingredients. I'm like, I just told my husband to go get his crock pot because <laughs> we drive long hours. So it would be nice that when we're finished that we already have a meal already, yeah. you know, prepared. We yeah. just have to find a place to put it so it doesn't like, we got to like strap it down or something. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's so many, like, it's amazing how many slow cookers are out there now. I mean, we got the small pots, big pots. Mm. Back in the day, I feel like it was just that one slow cooker that you got from your mom or your parents. Yeah. <laughs> and it just always burnt stuff. But now there's timers on there. I find slow cookers that have, like, you can, you know, be out and tour and start it, you know, right. a little later, or just check on it by your phone. I mean, there's so many things. So oh, I'm there. Yeah, I am official a crock potting from this day forward. <laughs> I'm an official crock potter now. And if anyone else is watching that's on tour or camping or in an RV and or their oven's just not working, this is such a great um, tool for you to like use if you don't have an oven or if you're in an RV, mm. it's so hot already camping out there. You don't want to get that oven started, you know? It does make it hotter. Yes. So this will help you. Trust me, it will save your life because I'm pregnant. I'm having a baby next month. The oven does work here and it's hot. And um, yeah, I don't want it on. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. So what you got? You got a pot roast. I do. So what we're going to do is so easy to do. You have uh, four boys like me. Yes. <laughs> that is so cool. 
Uh, how did you survive the four boys, by the way? <laughs> well, it was easy techniques like this. I had to create a system, which means um, on Sunday, I would cook all my meals for the week. Oh, okay. And so I would make sure I refrigerated them. I would label them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I just made sure that the one thing I didn't have to do when I picked them up from school was cook. Because yeah. that's like a whole other task to think about what you're going to cook then actually cook it then clean up after yourself so yeah. i had little tricks like paper plates forks spoons napkins knives everything went in the trash yeah. i had you know what i'm saying so it was these kind of tips i did the crock pot when my kids were young and i would put the food on in the morning and when i came back home my food was done so crock pots was definitely a part of the the mix for sure. They do. It yeah, did. And, that, and that's what I love because I mean, who wants to come home from like such a long day? And then you're also like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna? You don't want fast food. And right. I mean, right now it's like fast food isn't like how it was even a couple right. years ago. Right now it's like ten dollars for a kid's meal. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me that the other day. Yeah. That the, the kids' meal was eight something. Yes. Yeah. My kid's meal. I, like, I have a toddler and I mean, my, even my one-year-old, he loves a burger. I'm like, that's, that's like two, two, three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it you know, used so, to be. No, not at all. I mean, you could eat really good for five dollars back in the day. So my you know, goodness gracious. So that's why it's so nice to go back into um, you know, how, what our mothers did, what our parents did back in the day, even Absolutely. what you did when you first had your kids, um, yep. 15, 20 years ago, you, you know, you were able to, um, and I think that's the key with parenting too, is to really prepare yourself, like get that laundry done, get those outfits for school done. So they have them for the week. Mm. I've noticed when I prepare a little bit earlier, it, it saves future Lisa. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm Definitely. always talking back to myself, like, thanks, past Lisa. Okay, yeah. let's go back to this is really simple. If you're a newbie or, you know, just getting back to the whole slow cooking um, again, roast is like the one thing that a lot of people do, you know, or hear of when you do a crock pot, but you can do, like I was telling you, cakes in a crock pot pizza. There's a lot of things to do. So today we're going to just get started and um, I'm going to give you an alternative tip as well if you don't want to do the traditional crocking roast. So I have my two and a half pound roast in here and I'm also going to add my veggies where I love carrots and I use the baby carrots. So I just put them in and sometimes, it, you know, you could put the meat on top um, some people like to cook their potatoes a little bit later too. Um, so what I do is I put my veggies on down first, then my meat. So, but today I had my meat already in there because I didn't want to like wash my hands and do all that on camera. <laughs> so normally I put my carrots down first, then I put my roast down. And then I put a little bit of pepper on it, one fourth teaspoon. And then I put a little bit of one fourth teaspoon of salt. Then I have my dry onion soup mix here. And again, if you don't have that, you can just use onion flakes that you have already in your pantry and a cube of beef bouillon. That's all you need. And then I, it says a half a cup of water, but I, like I said, I love extra flavor for my roast. And so I got beef stock and I just got a whole, I'm going to put a whole thing in that. That's 32 ounces. Boom. Look at that. Beef stock, that's the mm -hmm. key ingredient, not oh, water. Yeah. Especially like if you're making chicken too, you oh, want to do anything God. with chicken instead of like when it calls for like half a cup of water, I put half a cup of chicken stock because, mm -hmm. well, not half a cup, I just use the whole 32 ounces. <laughs> I think it adds a lot of flavor than the water. Look but, at that. Yes. But I mean, if you are watching your sodium, you can get low sodium. If you don't have it, I'm also... I love using what you have. So if you don't yeah. have it, water's cheaper, put that in. It's still going to taste really good. That's all. Yeah. I'm not giving you recipes that are bland. <laughs> then I took five potatoes. I'm still cutting up the rest of them because we were like on the go today. But I have, um, I peeled five potatoes and um, cut them up and put them right in the slow cooker too. And see, boom, that's it. 
That's so easy. And you're going to cook this on low for six to eight hours and come home to a yummy roast. And if you don't want to make homemade potatoes too, like my kids, like they let there's potatoes in here, but they won't eat them. They want mashed potatoes. So I'll just do instant potatoes for them. I mean, if your kids are picky and they don't like certain things, this goes also good with mac and cheese. I mean, there's, there's endless things, applesauce too. So that's pretty much what we do is like we eat our roast just like this. And then some amazing Italian bread I bring to it as well. What about you? <laughs> that I'm, you see me over here. I'm like, mm, I, I'm just, I'm already in the plate. Like I'm already eight hours later. I'm like mashed potatoes. You got my whole head. On. I'm like, that sounds so good. I'm trying to change it. I'm trying to behave. I'm, I'm, I'm behaving. <laughs> But it's that makes amazing. you not want to behave. <laughs> it's so good. And I do. I like dipping bread in it as well. <laughs> I mean, I was in a fairy tale just now. That's just, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's a shame. I feel like I'm talking to I mean, I'm, I am talking to a makeup star here. I love this whole bus. Like, just I'm I'm amazed by your background. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, come I mean, on. <laughs> Okay, so before we get started about you, because you're so interested, I love what you're doing in the world. I love, like, you're on this amazing tour right now, too. And I want to get right into your interview. But first, one more tip. If you didn't want to do carrots and potatoes and the beef stock and the onion dip, you could just get one roast, a stick of butter, okay, and this whole jar of banana peppers and a little, and those packets of ranch those dry ranch mix, mm -hmm. put it right on top, cook it on hot or low for six to eight hours. You have this thing called a Mississippi roast. Banana peppers. I love banana peppers. Yeah. So, so you put nice. that in the roast and just some ranch and some butter and some ranch. Ooh, we so good with mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the mashed potatoes. Oh okay. my gosh. <laughs> Well, I have some notes for you, by the way. I have, like, my little note cards. Actually, it's my mail. <laughs> I already know. <noticed. laughs> Forget it. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> what, first of all, why are you doing this? What, like, you're on tour. You know, you have already raised, you're raising, you raised amazing boys. You know, you had this awesome uh, career. What made you just do this? Like, how did you yeah. start all this? <laughs> Um, well, I've been doing this work for about 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was a welfare mom. I had four kids. I was on the verge of losing my mind, committing suicide, and killing my sons. I was going to drown them in a tub. Oh, and yeah. it was a crossroads. And I remember, you know, the Lord hit them from my eyes. And I thought I was losing my mind because I was like, oh, my God, my kids were here now they're not here. But I just remember one of them, Nazareth, he just he saved us all because he came out. The Lord really did it, but through him, he was eating his cookie and he was laughing so loud, but in his laughter was such innocence, such joy, such peace, something that said, hold on, wait, it gets better. It gets better. I remember, um, actually, I remember, um, falling to my knees and I asked God, if he got me out of this in my right mind, I would come back and help others. And so that's exactly what I did. So for so long, I was just doing one and one, one and one on my own, helping moms navigate the system, helping them get back into school, helping them start small businesses, helping them, you know, keep their benefits, protect the income that was coming in. And it was during COVID um, where we had received some funding and it was like, okay, so how do we level up? How do we scale? How do we do this on a larger level uh, we had already you know we had already had a strategy to move one million moms of welfare we've been planning that since 2015 but you need the actual um funding for that you that's do. my partner kim she's actually a part of the tour she's going to see her family because we're parked here in louisiana for about two weeks okay bye, bye, bye kim, kim. Kim, 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 come on for a second. Let's give you a shout Wait, out. She said, she said, come on for a second, give you a shout out. You done called the Uber. I didn't. I got two 
Okay, she wants to go, but it was outside. But hi, Kim. Oh, yeah. Hi, Lisa. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? I just wanted to say thank you so much for all your work. It is a gift to the world, a gift to so many moms. And I just want to, you know, I'm happy to support you. We want to give you a shout out from the show. We're live on television right now on Fuck What Moms. And you girls just keep doing what you're doing. Cause, I mean, it's definitely showing um, the progress. And you guys are just, I know you're going to be even more successful. So good luck and thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you so much. Keep us in your prayers. Yes. Thank you. Bye. And her Uber is arriving. So she's going home to be with family. But, you know, the work we do, um, I actually, you know, anything I do, I really don't do too much stuff without praying. I'm like, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, acknowledge me. The Bible says, acknowledge me in all the ways, lean not on your own understanding so I could direct your path. I really didn't know what more to do. And I saw this huge RV, blue wrapped RV running down the highway. And I was like, oh my God. And I thought that was insane to even get out there in that forefront. Like that. I was petrified. But because I was petrified, I knew I had to do it because I'm not afraid of anything. But yes. because that scared me, it challenged me at the same time. Yes, and I feel it, that yeah. as well. Like I notice when this fear comes over me, I then pray and I say, God, remove this fear and replace it with faith. And mm -hmm. even though like I don't, I know fear, you know, happens here and there for me, but I know it's something that I'm like, wait, like I was scared to do this show. I was I'm so, sure. I had so much better to do a podcast just radio because I can mute when the guest is talking. I can mute the chaos, the kids coming in and out. But, um, you know, I just said, you know what? I'm replacing this fear with faith and all this amazing stuff has started happening because of it, because I'm believing mm -hmm. myself and keeping God at the center. And, he, and you know what? It just can't happen without him. So I'm so glad. And his, the miracles that happen, I mean, it is awesome. Like, you were, I mean, I have a master's degree in counseling. I understand, um, you know, I've counseled so many women. I know the things that you were going through, not personally, but right. I can empathize. And I'm so glad um, he spoke to you in such a way that you were yeah. able to get out of that because that is hard. There's a lot of people Definitely. who do not take that step at all. Yeah. It is too hard. It's not there. And like he spoke to you in so many ways. And then now you're giving back. And I love yes. these songs that start happening. Like you saw this bus and you were like, wait a minute, <laughs> I want to do that. So tell yes. me about what, what are you doing with this tour? What is it all about? So it's called the welfare tour. And what okay. we're saying is moms don't want welfare. Yeah. We want welfare. We want a fair distribution of America's wealth. We The rules that are on the side of entitlement programs, the policies, the programs, they are created to keep people stuck in a cycle of dependency. But yet wealthy America gets all of these deductions and tax credits and mortgage deductions and bailouts. And But the rules are not the same. So, you know, for on this side, for for um, moms, as soon as a mom goes back to work, she, this is Pepper, everybody say, say hi, Pepper. Hello. Say hi. Pe Pepper Love thinks she's, she's a bull. She thinks she's a bulldog. Actually. She <laughs> acts like she's a little bull, a big bulldog. Yeah. Um, but the, the, we, we want the truth of the matter is what many people may not know, Lisa, is when a welfare mom, and I say welfare because that's what it is. We're all on it to some yeah. degree. I don't care if you're getting um, financial aid. You can get veterans affairs. It's government assistance. It's taxpayers' dollars. You know? Yeah. And so like we're, I've been on programs before, too. Like, I know I have a million followers, but I was a mom before, and I was a working mom with a master's degree, counseling. Yeah. But we have no programs for us. Like back in the day when I had my 14 year old, once I um, had my son, he was a preemie and I ended up having to leave work for a little bit with no income um, because he was three pounds, two months early on breathing machines, multiple surgeries. So I had to live in the hospital for over 31 days and there were no 
programs like paternity leave already had me back on. And so I had no job and I did, I tried the WIC program, which was it's yep. such an amazing program out there for women, Absolutely. And children, um, the go by your income. And it was so great because they provided expensive formula that my son actually needed as a preemie and being so sick. Cause it was like $30 a can then. And that was back in the day because it was a special formula. So there was no right. way I could afford that. How could I feed my new newborn infant with no job and no program out there? And so I noticed that when I went back to my job, though, even though I was struggling with my kiddo um, being sick and all his surgeries, you know, you have to get off work because as a master's degree, you claim it once you go back to work. I had a claim. I, I got back to my job. I, I, you know, they rehired me and things like that. But in a way, I still had to go to, through training again. I had to go and wait for a while till a paycheck even came. Mm -hmm. But if you have that job, you get kicked off of the system. So that is so crazy. Yeah. That's the punit. So we say incentivize, not penalize. Moms get paid more money if they stay home and do nothing. Because, yeah. you know, if she's low now, in our sense, we use education. Education really was the thing to help us kind of scale out. And at least when we went into the market, we can get a little bit more for our time. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know? It was okay on my own because I had the education. Right. You know, it's just that transition time where I think it's really hard on all of us moms. And oh, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. But even so, more so when you're low edge, when you have no, ed, just a GED, you're not going, you're going to get minimum wage more than likely if you don't have a skill. And so as soon as she goes to work for that 825 an hour, you know, or that $15 an hour, she's losing all of her Medicaid goals, you know, week goals. Uh, food stamps is decreased. If she's in public housing or Section A, she's getting her rent is going up. And all of these deductions and our increases are happening not at a strategic way to help her reduce economic no. failure, but they're happening all si separate and apart with no regard to, you know, what she what she's bringing in. It's like and, I'm yeah. because she's going out and doing the right thing. You are promoting her to get a job. You know, you want her to get off. Right. Of work. You want you and you'll hear people in the community like, oh, they live on welfare. Oh, you know, you'll hear all these comments. Well, yeah. you know, sometimes what they don't understand is that it kind of keeps you on there because Absolutely. you go out and you do all this stuff. You know, it's a lot of stress because you're gonna you lose them. You lose yeah. the benefits. And yeah. then you're gonna and then you're gonna be short. Then you can't pay the rent. So how you working and can't pay the rent? Isn't that what we go to work to do to get our bills paid to get yeah. a decent quality of life? And, and so yeah, no. Oh my God. You now here's what people don't understand. <laughs> child care and wick by themselves. You're talking expense formula back in the day when I had children. They it was like eight dollars, almost what five, six to seven dollars a bottle. A can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who could afford? And that was one baby, let alone two, three, four. I couldn't afford it. Child care. You know, some kids, child care is like a thousand to two thousand a month. A week. Oh, for one? Oh, oh, oh yeah. It, depending where you live, a thousand a week, definitely. But some oh, yeah. cases, it, you know, back in the day when I had a 14 year old, it would be a thousand a month. You know, it just depends yeah, on where you live. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then, for the newborns, I think it was like eight hundred dollars a week, eight sixty two for a newborn in the child care for sure. Yeah. Those were the rates. And there's waiting yeah. lists now too, so it's just so hard. I think for yeah. our parents out there to take care of the kids, take care of the household, make sure they're all financially eating well. You know, and then you also have extra finances for it's just. I feel like it's keeping us all at this uh, this level that we can't succeed. You know, we can't jump out of it. And, you know, so I love what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, we just want wealth to be fair. And if that means some people yeah. have these narratives, oh, it's going to be a socialist, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever, because whatever we have right now, it's not working. If we think that yeah. it's okay for the really, really wealthy and rich to to live and then I mean, you're raising children for Christ's sake, they, like right. children and teenagers. I mean, like I was, we was, we was at this RV park and we had this family that was from, what was it, Switzerland? No, maybe not Switzerland. I know it was like Europe. 
Okay. And they were saying how they pay 50% of their income in taxes. Like they pay a 50% income tax. And wow. I was like, whoa. whoa. He said, yeah, that's what I was like, whoa. I'm thinking like, mm. and then he said, but everything is free. All of our health care is yeah. free. All of our, if you want to go to school, college was free. He said, if yeah. you want to go and be a doctor, you could do it for free. I was like, no. He was like an attorney for free. I bet you there's more doctors over there. <laughs> But they just yeah out there. And that's the thing. That's what's stopping, I feel too. I don't know, like back in the day, I'd hear everybody, I want to go to college. I can't wait to go to college. I'm noticing my 14 year old's generation yep. saying certain things like, I don't know if I'm gonna yep. go. Yep. And I'm like, wait a minute, no, because like a couple of years ago, I was like, you have to go to college. <laughs> like that's all the mindset was. But now it's like, I don't know if I want to go to college because of the debt that you receive yep. out of college. And and not even that, Lisa, not just the debt. What, it happened with my sons. What's happening is technology is creating these morphing industries. We're going so far so fast. The educational system cannot keep up. Yeah. And people are finding that I can make $100,000 just by doing this over here with, in, in less than a year. You yeah. know, and so one, I had two sons that were in business school, um, two of the four, and they said that they asked their professors if they ever owned a business and they didn't. And they said, how can you, a person teach me how to run a business if they've never run it? And that's when they lost credibility with the system. I, and I couldn't even say anything. I just was like, <laughs> I can't either. Like, you're right. Like, that's so true. Like, oh my gosh. You about it, like when you think too about like learning law, like were, were they lawyers? Are they, te are they, you know, you, you really want to learn. Like, even when I think about it, like my professors, um, you know, as a master's degree therapist, like how many of them are psychologists that taught right. versus professors? Uh, let me tell you something. In this poverty experience, the one thing I've learned, and I was just talking yesterday to Kim, you can be theoretically book, and it's in the book, but without a real live experience or having to have walked it out, there is something precious about the walkout. Because yeah. at the end of the day, not even a walkout, meaning you've had to walk exactly what I walked, but you've had to walk your stuff. Like, yeah. what has your life produced? What pressure, what pain, what triumphs and trials have you over achieved and overcome to give you the right to give me advice? Exactly. And not just because you graduated from school. No, that's not enough. Not because you're just telling me I have to listen. <laughs> no, that's not enough. No. And I think this this generation is waking up. And plus our challenges yeah. today yeah. are so intricate that it's requiring a special I say the anointing but yeah. it is requiring a special skill to undo and unravel because if it worked it would be working yes oh I love our youth by the way like I just I think it's really cool to see how they think and and call things out like we're, we're I know I'm an 80s baby so mm -hmm. it was like we knew things were wrong it was before, like, you were not confrontational and you just kind of had to deal with it, even though some, I mean, I was always saying stuff. <laughs> I'm yeah. always saying stuff. Thank you know? God for those people. Where yeah. would we be if we never spoke up? Yeah, never. exactly. Like, I don't tolerate it. And I had clients for years because I worked with a lot of kiddos on the autism spectrum and in the schools and community. And I'm, I mean, I was their little fighter for them, even in the schools. Like, you no, have to be. no way. Yeah. I mean, I would Especially not. Especially the children with disabilities. I have a heart for them. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, a colleague who works with us. She has a, a disabled daughter, but she can't make more than $2,000 a month because of the disability. Oh, and nice. I said, so she's constantly, she's always trying to, she's challenged with doing this, that, and a third. And I'm like, if you have disabled children, $2,000 a month because she receives this disability? Yeah. Therapy's not cheap. Um, also, too, just like clothing, things that you couldn't, you can't claim. 
You know what I mean? Like if someone has a sensory issue, they're getting a lot of holes in their clothes or you have to find clothes. There's just so many things people don't even think about that your children need. You know, if they're, especially if you have sensory, sensory issues, Mm -hmm. you know, clothes or, you know, I had a client before that, you know, they, she needed a special bed. She needed a special bed and insurance would not cover it. Oh my gosh. Would not cover it. And so, you know, her, she needed to go out and make more money to get this bed for her daughter. And, you know, there's uh, showers and or things that, you know, people need for their homes that just are not approved. And wow. you need more money to get that for your kid, but then you could get knocked off of benefits. So, you're, you know, I love what you're doing, how you're going out there. You want to change the system. You want to promote um, what you guys have learned. And so others can help as well, but how can um, others help you? Like our viewers out there, our listeners listening right now, how can we support what you're doing out there and uh, just be uh, an extra force? And uh, we're here to help. <laughs> hey, this is my husband. He's the driver. He's oh, on the hello. podcast too. Oh, I love it. Look how sweet these <laughs> guys are. I love birds. I love it. And I Listen, love this, her. <laughs> it's like a family. It's a family. Well, I'm not going to it's a family because we're, you know, we're committed to this cause, but God worked it out perfectly. I think exactly. if you are a, it depends on who you are. Number one, if you are as someone who receives um, entitlement programs, welfare, I call it welfare, but some people don't even like the name. It's such a degrading name. And I'm like, mm-hmm. so you know, that's why we have it from welfare to welfare, right? Okay. They like- have SNAP, you know, Medicaid, uh, food, you know, um, WIC, TANF, housing, Section 8. What we, you know, if you are in those type of programs, we want you to, you know, visit canilive.org to see if, in fact, there are some programs that you would like to do. We have a um, education, a work readiness makeover, like a professional makeover, where Mm -hmm. we actually drill down and help identify who you are, what skills you have, where you really belong, and put you on that Mm -hmm. pathway. Um, We have an incubator for our entrepreneurs out there that want to start small businesses. Um, And so um, how do we... So what do we do? Like, how do we just um, go on your website or your social media pages? So canilive.org is our site. Okay. Um, you can visit canilive.org. You can visit the welfare tour. Um, I was just, I just so I was supposed to be on a podcast. This time zone is crazy for me. No. So definitely visit canilive.org. Um, find out what we do. You can always support us. We have a few under our supporters tab. There's a couple of ways that you can support us. If you're shopping Amazon, you can support us. We have our Smile Amazon account. We have our PayPal charity. I mean, we're out here partnering with housing authorities. Um, pretty much that is our niche area because they're home to, they're managing about 8 million families nationally from public housing to section eight. So we focus there. Um, and so d- donate for sure. Cause gas prices are ridiculous. Yeah. And I so, agree. you know, yeah. So we are, we're, we're out here. Um, and believe it or not, if you're a policymaker, I'm going to tell you guys, if you know, if you're married to a policymaker, to make sure your, your congressman or your um, city officials, they, do they even understand the world of public housing and the funding that should be going towards residence training and contracting? Do they even understand, you know, what these worlds should be doing for families and why are they warehouses for generational poverty year after year? Yeah. Contact us. We'll have an education and we'll do a whole training. So we're doing some training out here. Um, in New Orleans and Texas, Mississippi, California, um, Alabama over the next few months. But it really is towards the section, the, the public housing industry. Yeah, I love it. And so, guys, please reach out to them, tweet them, follow them. If you need advice to reach out to Raquel Jones because she knows what she's doing. You can follow Amen. her on media pages and also on um, Brilliance.com, right? Brillionaire, the brillionaire. Is it brilliant? Um, yeah. So I'll put the Can I Live website right there in the. So um, I'm. You can locate me on my Instagram. It's at the brillionaire. 
Yeah, because you have a book too. I, I know we got to go. We're like so over time. I know. <laughs> so sorry to my TV network. I mean, we love you. I know they'll cut me off when I need to. But I just wanted to say you have a book. It's called Get Your Hands Off My Butt. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so this is a, yeah, you can find that right there on the brillionaire.com. I have two books. One is Get Your Hands um, Off My Butt, it's a hands on guide to a, avoiding the welfare trap. Um, it's something about African American women. The derriere is like worshipped almost. Yeah. To the point, you know, you have people getting Brazilian butt jobs. Like they're dying putting fix a flats in their butts. And that's crazy. So yeah. I teach youth and young adults that they're behind, especially women, it's not your best asset, actually. Yeah. And how to find and and come from out of all of those material just just that pressure of having to conform um, but then i also have and then also is really a pregnancy prevention um parenting intervention tool so um thank you michelle you know for young parents that want to make sure you know we don't want young babies because if we have young babies you have young you you're going to be on the welfare system if that young dad is not capable of taking care of their children and then we have get your hands out my pocket. That's the guy, hands on guide to avoiding the child support system. So it really is teaching these young men and women don't have children before you're responsibly ready to do so because she's going to welfare and he's going to child support. And then you're both coming going down two spiral, two roller coasters that lead to destruction almost. Exactly. My my mom's a teen mom and I have watched her. I mean, now she's so, I mean, she's still hardworking. And she won't stop, but she has been working so hard from the time that I was born and she still yeah. is to this day. And she just said how hard it was, you know, but she yeah. would never give up. And so I love the programs that you're doing and helping guys check out Raquel Jones. Thank you so much for being on today. We have to have you back. I'm so oh, sorry. No. I know. I enjoyed it. This was my first like cooking interview and stuff where I had to engage. So thank you, Lisa. I appreciate yeah. it. Yes, and we got to have you back. Of course, we want to know what else is going on. And guys, check her out. And guys, stay tuned for more awesome recipes and interviews just like this at the Crockett Moms. Bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>